This one should hopefully look familiar. This is the trade distillation column that we've been doing for about a month now. Remember the relevant parameters were uh, R and N, where N is the number of stages and R is the reflux ratio. Now for the packed column, all that we've done is we've taken the plates out and we've added a pack. So that's small bits of ceramic, plastic, metal. And we've packed it to a certain height. So Instead of N, we're worried about H. We still have a reflux ratio. And then there's going to be a whole bunch of other parameters that we can write that we'll get into. What is H? Sorry. H is, H is the height of the bed. So instead of stages, we're worried about what H is. So if we zoom in on a piece of packing, we'll model it as a sphere. The way it works is that it allows the liquid to kind of contact the sphere. The liquid's coming down. Liquid's contacting the sphere of packing, and there's vapor coming up like this that are contacting each other there. So that's like what's happening microscopically. And we can graph this like so. We say this is the pellet. Uh, this will be the liquid. This is the interface. And this is the vapor. And this axis is concentration or composition. Uh, the vapor will have some comp composition, YA, which is a familiar notation. And the liquid will have some composition, XA. And then they kind of meet somewhere in the middle. Right, and at this point, these two are in equilibrium. So this, the interface is the, the point exactly where the liquid and the vapor are meeting. And th these profiles are governed by the laws of diffusion and whatnot that we learned in mass transport. So this will be xi for x interface. The notation is a little bit confusing. This is x, that's like not component i. It's like i is an interface and yi. So, but the only issue is we don't know like what those actually are. So there's a way to get around that because you can't you can't measure what xi or yi is or get it from theory. Uh, so we need a way to measure concentration. Uh, we can write these equations, P equals Y big P, where this is the partial pressure. And big P is the total pressure. This is something you might have seen in MEB that looks familiar. And we can also write x, x big C equals little c, uh, where this is concentration. And this is molar density. The big C. 
Big C's molar density. So that's uh, like grams per volume. So for example, water Uh, we, we know the molar weight of water, it's 18 grams per liter, grams per mole, right? Mm -hmm. And then we also know, uh, we also know the density of water. Help me out. What is it? Should molar density be more than gram per mole? Yeah, it's like 1,000 grams per liter. Kilograms per meter cube. Yeah. So, oh, one kilogram per liter. So one thousand grams per liter. Okay, so then it's it's a thousand over eighteen. For water. Well, isn't it moles? Moles per liter. It's in moles per liter. Is it moles per liter? Oh, yeah, yeah, grams cancel. Okay, so these two are, are analogous. This one just works well for vapors because you have Y, and this one works well for liquids because you have X. So uh, little p and little c are related by Henry's law. This is something else that I remember from MEV. And that introduces Henry's constant. So H will be defined for the, the system that you have in question. So you can substitute these two into this one. Uh, that P is the big P, right? Little P. Little I try to, so anything with a tail will be little P. <coughs> can substitute and find this. This is just algebra. What you'll notice, this is in y equals mx plus b form. So we can define an m, which is that half. And then this m will, have, will be analogous to, like, uh, for, dil for dilute, you remember we said y equals mx if x is sufficiently low. Yeah, so all I did was I substituted these two equations into there. And then rearranged. A little bit more defining we have to do. 1 over h prime is the solubility. H prime, 1 over H prime is X over P. There's also 1 over CH. Solubility, I think, in practices will be given for the most part. Is that little p? Uh, big P. No tail, big P. Is that a big C? Yeah. DJ? Yeah. Are you saying on the left side of solubility? One over h prime, okay. where one over h prime is also equal to x over. This, this is a lot of lot of stuff to remember, and I totally empathize with that. So, try to give it the old stare down the night before. <laughs> <laughs> so you can rewrite m in terms of the solubility. Uh, m is h prime over p. Actually, this is the most important one. So, if you're given solubility, you know that solubility is 1 over H. So that means it's 1 over the solubility over the total pressure is M. So I would just memorize that. And then this is where it all comes from. <laughs> With this the bottom line. DJ. Yeah. You said there's a big P and a little P. Uh, yeah. Uh, little P is only there. These are, that's a big P, that's a big C. Uh, little p is uh, partial. Little p is partial pressure. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Big C, big H, big P. Yeah, all bigs. Yeah, he's yeah. So right, he does this kind of weird thing. I don't know what that is, but yeah, that's, if that'll help, I'll do it. But I think we're, we're, we'll be past that. Right? Okay, so if if your solubility is large, that means you have something that's highly soluble. So that means this quantity is that means H. Shit. Solubility is large. H prime is small. Then you have something soluble. And the opposite is also true. Uh, so if soluble. M is large or small? Small. Small. And if it's not soluble, M is large. Okay. That should be the hardest part. Maybe not. It's the most memorizing you have to do. Okay, so I mentioned briefly that uh, this is this interface across the interface is where most of the mass transfer is happening. So we can define the flux across the interface. Na is the flux. Little ky times the quantity y minus yi. Okay, so what that says is y minus ya is this distance here. And then the mass transfer coefficient is, has to do with what the shape of this line looks like. So the y there is ya? Yes. I'm going to omit that because I think that will make it confusing going forward. Um, this is defined so that it's always positive. So write <coughs> this so it's always plus. So what I mean by that is if you had a situation in which uh, the concentration of the liquid was higher, then you'd have the opposite thing going on and yi would be higher than y. So depending on your situation, you may also have uh, ky, y, i minus i, y. So you have to look at the situation and figure out which one to use. So that's the vapor side. You can write the same thing for the liquid side. Na equals kx. And then uh, for whichever one you use, it'll be like the opposite for the liquid. So if you use yi minus y for the vapor, it's xi minus x for, for the liquid. And if you use yi minus y, it's x minus xi. Because what comes out of one phase must go into the other phase, these two are both equal. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but this is the mass transfer coefficient. Uh, if one's positive and one's negative, then their summation is zero? Uh, they should both be positive. Oh, okay. Write them both okay. Sorts, such that they should be What's that? The swap. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the units is mass per area per time. <coughs> should sound somewhat familiar. Okay. So we don't really care about the flux. We care about the rate. So we need to convert the rate. Or the flux, which is 
uh, moles per area per time into something that's just moles per time. Uh, so we define another parameter called a, little a, is a packing parameter. Uh, which is the surface area to volume ratio of the pellets. You should never have to figure this out, but if you imagine that if it's a sphere, it probably won't be a sphere, but a sphere has a surface area of four r squared. Four pi r squared. Four, four, four pi r squared. And the volume is four thirds pi r cubed. So for a sphere, it's uh, one over three r. Three over r. Three over r. Right. So that's just an example. Most of the time, it's like not. It's not a. It's not a, a sphere. It'll have holes poked in it to increase the surface area to volume ratio. That's just for FYI. Uh, that'll that'll be like a this is a parameter of the packing. So like if you have X pellets, they'll have an A value of whatever. And then big A is the cross sectional area. Make sense? Okay, so the rate is then uh, flux times A times big A. No, times the volume. Uh, so the volume is A times the height element. So in a column like this, we'll pick a slice out like this, we we'll call that DZ, we'll call that A. Notice I said in the beginning, we don't actually know what yi and what xi actually are. So that's a big problem because they're in our equation. They're in there. So we define something else that we do know. Uh, define y star uh, is uh, vapor composition that is in equilibrium with X. X star, which is the liquid composition in equilibrium with Y. So on the diagram, all that means is we take xa, find where xa is. That'll be in equilibrium with some y, call that y star. And same thing for the other side. So because we know the bulk concentrations, we can then go to our equilibrium data and figure out what the star should be. Uh, so we have to define other mass transfer coefficients. It's a lot of defining. So those will be the big k's. So 
of big K Y A, big K Y little a, Y minus Y star, big A D Z equals big K X little a X star minus X big A D Z. Yeah, so uh, I take my XA, my bulk concentration in the liquid, draw over here, find what's in what's in equilibrium with that. So that'll, there'll be some, you have to go to your equilibrium data or figure that out somehow. So whatever's in equilibrium with this, and it's hard to see on my graph, I just picked this point. The point is that Y star is in equilibrium with X in the bulk and vice versa. X star will be in equilibrium with YA, as opposed to YI and XI, which are in equilibrium with each other. But the YI is going to be different. Y star is going to be different from the X star. Yes. I mean, in regards to the equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, X star and Y star are both different. But yeah, let's, let's draw, try to draw a different graph and make it bigger. Uh, so let's say Y is up here. Say x is down here, and we'll just say this is the the separation is the same. So x y x is right there. This will be y star. Y is up there. It's about the same distance. X star. Is there. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, if this is the equilibrium separation, I'm going to say that doesn't change. So that equilibrium separation is in bulk composition in the vapor in equilibrium with X star. Bulk composition in the liquid in equilibrium with Y star. So we know the equilibrium data, and we know, we know what X and Y are. We just don't know what Y, I, and Y, and Y, I, and X, I are. So we have to define different mass transfer coefficients and different uh, interfacial. Yeah. Are you saying the distance between y and x star is the same distance between x and y star? Yes. OK, so most of this is actually stuff you don't use. <laughs> But you have to be aware of the difference between the big, big, big K's and the little K's. So what's the difference? Between the big K and the little K? Yeah. The little K you use with the interfacial. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the big K you use with the stars. Now there's another problem here. We don't know what the big K's are. We only knew what the little K's were. The frustration builds. So we've got a Y, a little Y that we know what it, what it is, but we don't know how to use it because we don't know what the interfacial concentration is. And we've got a big K that we don't know what it is, but we do know what the concentration is. So we've got to fix it by doing some algebra. I'm going to erase this whole side. That should be OK. I'm actually going to skip this derivation. It's probably unnecessary. Uh, if you're interested, it's in my handwritten notes, and I think it's in Dr. John's notes.
plus. So the big coefficients are both functions of both little coefficients. And m. What's m? Smoke, which is yeah. Right. Cool. <laughs> We're on our way. All right. Now, important caveats. Uh, so, if, if m is large or small, you can make some simplifications. So, if m is small, which means is it soluble or insoluble? Soluble. Soluble. <laughs> What happens if m is small? Uh, Kx turn goes away. Kx is yep. equal to little kx. Uh, big k equals little k. Yeah, big k equals little k. Hey. Ky. Right, and if this is small, uh, duh, then this one matters. And it's there, there, right? Kx is equal to mky. Yeah. And if M is large, it's the opposite. Now we'll actually solve problems. Or come close. Yeah. Did you upload your personal notes somewhere? Yeah. I did. Emily, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's in it's under like the notes section. It's it says peck column notes. Okay. It's a different format than the rest of his. Like I didn't start out with the number. Somebody say in English what this means in math. I wrote that in math. What's it say in English? Yeah, that was pretty good. Pretty much in each slice of the column, there's stuff moving back and forth. So if I take a, take a slice, there's, there's mass transfer happening, and then that stuff goes. It's, it's like just kind of like the stages. There's stuff going, going on, mixing back and forth. Uh, and those equal each other? Uh, do they? What do you think? I thought they did. It's not equimolar. Wait, never mind. No, it is. Oh, it is equimolar. So V D Y is equal to L D X. That makes sense. Well, maybe. Okay, so maybe if I wrote it like this, I guess it is a differential instead of like this. So, so this is. This is kind of like the. How do I want to say this? So remember when we did like stages, and we had like a, 
uh, y i minus one, and then y i. Then we had x i plus one, and then x. Right, and then we had also had l's for the x's and d's for the y's. Oh, that's an important caveat here. When you do packed columns, you assume that the solute is, is dilute so that uh, the flow rates remain the same. So L is equal to L, D is equal to D. And the rule of them being positive still applies here, so you would have to switch the Y's and X's if they were negative? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if I were to write a mass balance, I'd say uh, V, Y, I minus one plus L, X I plus one equals y, V Y I plus L. Wait, did I do that right? No. Yeah, I did. L X I. And then I could rearrange and say V uh, Y I minus one minus Y I equals L uh, X I minus x i plus 1. And then in the limit that this stage is infinitely lower, I have v dy dx equals l d, no, dz, dx dz. Does that make sense what I just did? That's just an analogy of what we did before. Can you write it a little bit bigger? Yeah, well, uh, all right. If that didn't make sense, don't worry about it. But it's it's just I'm drawing parallels between what we did with stages and what we're doing now. It's like a it's just a differential version. Okay. So yes, he's already. All right, we're going to get to equations that we can use momentarily. We're going to erase this side of the board. <coughs> there are only, like, look at what I do and then do the same thing. I want to look and see who's learned something and who can, like, solve a new problem with the last one. So the average is going to be low. I know that for a fact. So it's an opportunity to impress. Yeah. <laughs>